This is Dominic Corey here for Red Carpet Report. We're out at Pasadena for the FX Television Critics Association press tour. Yeah, yeah. very well. Um, we're hearing that this was always the plan to end this after three seasons. Yes. What does a show gain from, from having a defined and, 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 and anticipated end point? Well, I think you have to start at the beginning, and that was when Noah first came in and talked to us about the story that he wanted to tell. He knew how the story was going to end. And, you know, when you think about the show, sometimes when you're watching it, you feel like you're on a magical mystery tour, except that the fun of it is when you know where the magic bus is going, it's actually quite exciting. And so if the first season was sort of introducing you to the world and the second season was you caught up in the world, then now this gives us an opportunity to sort of finish the world for this particular time. I, you know, I, I want to always be careful by saying that you know, when you're in the Marvel Universe, stories go on. Um, and all of these characters, some of which are from the X-Men universe and some of which are from the imagination of Noah Hawley, um, if no one wants to tell more stories, I, I would think that Marvel and, and FX would be starting the next day. Um, and so having somebody who is a visionary being able to tell a complete tale is great fun. Um, season three, yes. are we going to see any Charles Xavier action? Um, I think it's best that I not say anything because of the red laser dot that's on my forehead from my friends at Marvel Security. How do you choose what to pull in and what not to pull in from the mythology? It's such a huge mythology, but this show obviously has its own vibe as well. A lot of that has to do with, with what our showrunner, in this case, Noah Hawley, wants to tell. And so we work in very close coordination with FX. Noah tells us the story that he wants to tell. And, and he's, from the beginning, has been sort of aware of, you know, we like to sort of say that he, you have a nine-lane highway, just try not to hit the guardrails. And if you start looking like you're going to hit a guardrail, then we will raise a flag and go, maybe that's... But while you're on the highway, if you want to drive a million miles an hour or pull a U-turn or do a donut or drive backwards, go ahead. Have fun. It's just great. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm all about streets today. <laughs> yeah. um, Legion's been acclaimed for how different and weird it is. Was that always the goal, to do something that was unlike any other Marvel adaptation? Well, I think all of our shows are. Um, we try not to make... Legion to be similar to S.H.I.E.L.D., to be similar to Daredevil, to be similar to Runaways. They, you know, they all have their own flavor and voice and network, and so all of those things matter. But really, more than anything else, if you're going to work with Noah Hawley, you want him to be able to bring his own special brand. What's really fun about it is that because he chose to work in the X-Men universe, those characters just... If you're an X-Men fan, it, this is not a surprise. This is, oh, this is exactly what I would expect from this sort of story, as opposed to a Captain America story, like it, which would be much more straightforward and much more action-oriented and that kind of thing. Legion has always been a character that is, at best, psychedelic. Uh, and so I think that's part of what Noah was attracted to, was the ability to be able to sort of break down the borders of what is a normal quote, comic book genre television show. And how can I tell that story in a way that comic book fans will really love it, but also people that have never, ever heard of Legion, but know that on FX there's quality television on every level, artistically, financially, cast-wise, all those things. And when you look at the cast, I mean, just starting with Dan, uh, you just go, I, I, I can't believe this is actually happening. And I also sort of feel like this is the kind of show that if you're not on it now, it's the show that you're going to find a year from now or five years from now. It's, this, this will be a show that people talk about for a long time. Has working on Legion uh, opened your mind in terms of what's possible with comic book adaptations? Because it did seem to break some new ground. Every time we do a show, we feel that way. I'm, uh, I think so much of this has to do with our showrunner, and also our network. So 
I, I do think that when we do our next show with FX, and I certainly hope that that's soon, is that you know John Landgraf will give us the opportunity to tell a story that is entirely unique, entirely surprising, and nothing like Legion. So we'll wait and see. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks so much. Take good care. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, give us the old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And uh, put in the comments what your favorite TV show is. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, this has been Dominic Corey for Red Carpet Report.